we weren't around when the dinosaurs breathed their last. But a breakthrough discovery reveals that our ancestors were. 66 million years ago, an immense asteroid slammed into the Earth, creating the equivalent of a nuclear winter. North America was rather close, thousands of miles away, compared to other places on the opposite end of the globe. So we felt that impact more readily than other places. The legendary T-Rex took its final steps in what is Montana today. It could have died from drowning in the channel, or it could have died prior to that and been swept into the channel and then been buried. So we don't know for sure, but it certainly looks like it lived an exciting life in the short amount of time that it lived. Now, a team of scientists has found a possible witness to the catastrophe, and it wasn't a dinosaur. We're not sure whether Purgatorius was dodging Tyrannosaurus in the Cretaceous, but it's certainly possible. A strange survivor that made it possible for humans to be here today. We recognize that we had a new species on our hands. They've uncovered evidence of a primate unknown to science until now. It's that ancestor that we think lived during the time of dinosaurs. When the experts want to find fossils from the Cretaceous, they head to the Hell Creek Formation in northeastern Montana. Dr. Greg Wilson Mantia is a professor at the University of Washington and the curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Burke Museum. There are plenty of places in the world that have deposits from this time period, but they're subsurface. They're below ground or they're covered by vegetation. You know, lawns and buildings and grass and or forest, etc. But in Montana, Dakotas, and so on, you find exposed rock at the surface of the Hell Creek Formation. So you can find dinosaurs and mammals from that time period. In the Hell Creek area, which is sort of our model for studying this mass extinction event, we had upwards of 30 different species of mammals. Dr. Stephen Chester is an assistant professor of anthropology at Brooklyn College. He looks for prehistoric primates, not dinosaurs. But big dinosaurs are easier to find, relatively speaking, than tiny mammals. And it's hard to ignore a T-Rex. About 50 individual tyrannosaurs have been found throughout the Hell Creek Formation, including a recent discovery by a team from the Burke Museum. We knew we had a T-Rex there, but we didn't know we would have a nice skeleton in the ground. And so that took some digging, and it, over the course of about a month, we uncovered what would become a tremendous skull. I mean, a beautiful skull from the back of the, the head all the way to the tip of the snout, with beautifully preserved mahogany colored bone and teeth with the serrations like a steak knife. With a five foot long skull and a mouth full of huge serrated teeth, this predator was capable of eating hundreds of pounds of flesh at one time. A spectacular specimen that got even better as we brought it back to the Burke, to this lab and prepared it. The new T-Rex on the block has been given the name Tufts Love Rex in honor of the volunteers who first noticed its bones. Their names are Jason Love and, and Luke Tufts, and that's where the name Tufts Love comes from. The scientists estimated that Tufts Love lived 66.3 million years ago, just before the mass extinction wiped out the dinosaurs and they believed the beast was involved in a deadly fight before it died. It was not that old of an individual to die. Um, they get up to, I think, 40 years old, and this was sort of 
21 years old, perhaps, but it has a lot of injuries along its face. So injuries, that, some that healed, so puncture wounds that, that healed from most likely fights with other T-Rexes. That would have been the only other thing that would have caused a, a puncture like that. And some that didn't heal. This T-Rex lived and died just before the mass extinction event. And the Hell Creek Formation, it captures a particular time. It's being deposited during the last approximately two million years of the age of dinosaurs, the latest Cretaceous. All of the large dinosaurs perished at the same time, but birds and some small mammals survived. Some of these mammals that were quite small could shelter even if they weren't burrowing types. Because they were small enough, they could find crevices and so on to sort of protect themselves from those elements. Mammals had been around for close to 200 million years, but they didn't have much chance to evolve into dominance among the huge reptiles. This mass extinction event that happened at the end of the Mesozoic was critical, was the pivotal turning point in many cases for allowing this flowering of, of the mammal diversity that we know today. Prehistoric mammals of the late Cretaceous didn't have the diversity of mammals today. We see a pattern that mammals that survived the extinction event tend to be really small. One was Purgatorius, known only to scientists from its fossilized teeth. Purgatorius was first described in 1965, and for 50 years it was only known from teeth and it was only known from jaw fragments. It still would have been a small mammal you know, rat-sized, um, not much larger than that, and probably cute, I would say. But the teeth of Purgatorius were unusual compared to other small mammals from the same time. Greg documented five isolated teeth of Purgatorius from this locality called Harley's Point. And he contacted me and wanted me to collaborate with him and try to figure out which species they represent. Two of them represented Purgatorius janisei, which is a species that had already been known. So those were relatively easy to identify. A third lower molar that we found looked somewhat different. Most mammals had teeth that were with cusps or points that were quite sharp and basins for crushing food that were not quite big and broad for grinding food. But here comes Purgatorius. It's lowering its cusps, making them rounder and broader, sort of like inflating the tooth a little bit. And that basin is getting broad such that it's a bowl or a, a mortar and pestle situation which you can grind food better. In particular, you can grind plant food better. Unlike its mammalian peers, which ate insects, Purgatorius had a varied diet. It was an omnivore. This seemed to suggest that Purgatorius might be the earliest ancestor of modern day lemurs, monkeys, chimps, all primates, including humans. When we think of primates today, we think of grasping hands and feet, dietary adaptations, teeth that are well adapted for eating plant products like fruit, visual adaptations like forward-facing eyes, and a relatively large brain. These characteristics are found in most primates today. But the team needed more proof that Purgatorius was the beginning of the primate line. You could learn a lot from, from teeth. You could try to determine how large a mammal was based on its molars. You could figure out its diet. But what you can't figure out is how it moved around. Gregory and Stephen examined more fossil Purgatorius bones collected from near the T-Rex dig site. And they weren't all teeth. What we found were ankle bones, and ankle bones are really informative in terms of how animals are moving around. The ankle bones that we found have specific features that allow for a great deal of mobility. 
So these animals are able to move their ankle in lots of different directions. And that's really amazing because that's the same kind of mobility that we see in primates that live up in the trees today. This breakthrough would completely challenge previous thoughts about Purgatorius. What's cool about these ankle bones is that they clearly suggest that whatever animal had that ankle was flexible enough in the way that it moved its feet to climb up trees. It wasn't land bound and it wasn't a digger. The researchers analyzed the teeth and bones with CT scans and then created 3D images to study them. The new fossils were dated to 65.9 million years old, at the most just 100,000 years after the end Cretaceous mass extinction event. Lots of people think that 100,000 years is, is, is a huge amount of time. We as paleontologists have a tendency to think of time in a relative sense, and in, in the scheme of things, this is a relatively short time period first Purgatorius were discovered back in the 1960s. And those were specimens found uh, right in the middle of the formation, which is about uh, 300 to 600,000 years after the KT boundary. The new fossils are 200,000 years earlier than any Purgatorius fossil found before. This places the creature right around the actual extinction event. It's very possible that these earliest archaic primates were around during the time of the dinosaurs. The scientists look to the basic rules of evolution. By nature of our understanding of, of evolution, we infer that there was an ancestor to these two species that we find in the first 100,000 years. And that ancestor most likely was living at the time of T-Rex. It was during the latest Cretaceous. If Purgatorius lived alongside the great dinosaurs and survived the mass extinction, then humans can trace their evolutionary history as primates much deeper back in time than we thought. It's really spectacular to think that our lineage, so this Purgatorius is on our, our line. It's separated from the Kalugos and the tree shrews, and it's on the line leading to primates. So it's a step towards you and I. And that's remarkable to see in the fossil record. If we look at ourselves today, it's difficult to conceive of our origins as small fuzzy critters that ate fruit and lived in trees. But there are telltale remnants in our faces and our bodies. You know, the biggest thing is when you look at your teeth, right? You can run, run your tongue across your teeth now and you can feel, they, they're not poking your, your tongue, they're, they're pretty smooth. And you can move our ankle bones and our hand bones around quite a bit. This revolutionary find is a huge step towards understanding how the earliest primates separated from other mammals following the demise of the dinosaurs. It's remarkable to think that events that took place 66 plus million years ago changed the course. And this line, we're capturing it right after the mass extinction that killed off most of the dinosaurs. And we're seeing those steps towards you and I in the rock record. The scientists plan to continue to dig for more answers. We're hoping to find other bones of Purgatorius that would give us more clues about not only the evolutionary relationships of Purgatorius, but also what it did for a living. We could still learn a lot more based on other bones of the skeleton. Humankind is only a very small part of an evolutionary continuum that stretches back more than 65 million years. But we've become the most formidable species on Earth, thanks to little Purgatorius.